Becky Sharp is a movie from 1935 that stands out because it was the first full-length film made in color. This alone makes it special in the movie world. It tells the story of a clever and ambitious woman named Becky Sharp who tries to rise in society. The movie is known for its strong characters and dramatic scenes. People still talk about it today because it shows how movies can tell powerful stories with great acting and new technology. Now let's talk about the characters. There are many, but Becky Sharp herself is the most interesting. She's smart and knows how to get what she wants, which makes her stand out. Watching her story, you'll find moments that make you laugh, surprise you, and even make you sad. It's a roller coaster of emotions, and that's what makes the movie so memorable. We're curious to know, what's your favorite part of Becky Sharp? Is there a scene or a character that stays with you? Maybe you have a story about the first time you watched it or how it made you feel. Share your memories with us in the comments. We love hearing how movies touch people's lives. So, keep watching and let's dive into the world of Becky Sharp together. The 1935 movie Becky Sharp, based on the novel Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray, was significant for being the first feature film to use three-strip Technicolor, bringing vibrant color to the screen. Its release was a milestone in film history, showing that movies could be as colorful as paintings. The film was well received for its visual appeal and the performance of its lead actress, Miriam Hopkins. While Becky Sharp itself did not lead to direct spin-offs, its success with color technology encouraged studios to produce more color films. It influenced the industry to move away from black and white pictures, setting a new standard for visual storytelling. The movie also led to a rise in popularity for costume dramas, inspiring future productions to invest in lavish sets and costumes. As for merchandise, the film's impact was seen in the fashion industry, with clothing and accessories inspired by the movie's costumes becoming popular. The film's adaptation from a novel also highlighted the potential for literary works to be transformed into movies, a practice that became increasingly common. Overall, Becky Sharp's release marked a turning point in cinema, influencing both the technology used in filmmaking and the types of stories told on the big screen. Its legacy is seen in the colorful, detailed, and dramatic films that followed in its footsteps. In a significant effort to preserve cinematic history, the 1935 film underwent a restoration process starting in 1984, led by the UCLA Film and Television Archive. This endeavor was further enhanced in 2017 with a 4K preservation by Paramount Archives, utilizing an extensive collection of 35mm film elements, including the original Technicolor negatives and positives. Miriam Hopkins, the lead actress, is recognized for her roles in three films deemed significant by the National Film Registry, including this 1935 classic. Despite being older than the characters she portrayed, Hopkins was chosen for her strong personality, aligning with the character's traits, although this required her to undertake speech training to moderate her southern accent. In a significant leap for cinema, the film introduced audiences to the three-strip Technicolor process for its entire duration, a first for feature films. This method recorded each primary color on a separate film strip, paving the way for more vibrant on-screen colors. However, the technology was in its infancy, resulting in colors that some found unnatural. Critics likened the actor's appearance to overcooked fish with a pale sauce. Adding to the film's historical note, Patricia Ryan, who later became known as Pat Nixon, appeared in a ballroom scene. While her role did not include credited lines, and her spoken words were cut from the final version, this appearance marked her debut in a feature film during her college years. The film stands out not only for its technological advancements, but also for these unique contributions to its making. Setbacks in production can occur for various reasons, including health issues of the cast. This was the case when the lead actress faced a health challenge, resulting in a two-week delay. Despite such hurdles, the film has stood the test of time, now accessible at no cost for those who wish to experience a piece of cinematic history. Its journey to television screens began in the mid-1940s, marking a significant milestone in the early days of broadcast television. The film's initial telecast set a precedent, being showcased on pioneering stations across various major cities, albeit in black and white, reflecting the technological limitations of that era. In a twist of fate, the directorial reins of the film were handed to Robin Mamoulian following Lowell Sherman's untimely passing. 
Despite public statements suggesting continuity with Sherman's vision, Mamoulian chose to reshoot all the scenes previously filmed. Meanwhile, Billy Burke, despite her prominent billing, graced the screen for merely one scene, delivering just two lines. Early discussions around the film even saw it being referred to by a different title, hinting at its literary origins before settling on the name by which it is known today. In the early days of Technicolor films, a unique casting brought together Frances D and her sister Margaret D sharing the screen in a significant production. Adding to the film's allure was the presence of Mistress Leslie Carter, a celebrated stage actress of the previous century who appeared in a small but notable role. Her legacy would later be depicted on screen by Miriam Hopkins. In a memorable performance, Alison Skipworth portrayed Miss Crawley, delivering her lines with commanding presence while seated throughout her scene, adding a layer of authority to her character. In a twist of fate, the lapse in copyright renewal for a classic film allowed it to enter the public domain, leading to widespread distribution. Unfortunately, this resulted in numerous low-quality versions, often edited from deteriorated copies flooding the market. The original director's untimely death led to a complete overhaul of the production, with his successor choosing to start anew. This decision also affected casting, with the director's wife stepping into a role following his passing. Years later, a re-release saw the film presented in a cost-effective color process, a stark contrast to its initial vibrant presentation. It wasn't until decades later that efforts were made to restore the film to its original color glory. In the late 19th century, a play titled after its sharp-witted protagonist debuted in New York, marking the beginning of its journey in American theater. It enjoyed a successful run and was revived multiple times over the next three decades. This stage production laid the groundwork for the film adaptation that followed years later, drawing from the same literary source that inspired the play. The transition from stage to screen was not without challenges. Technical issues with the sound quality during previews led to a complete overhaul of the audio track to ensure clarity for audiences. The meticulous process involved re-recording using advanced technology of the time, which was then integrated into the existing system for the final release. This adaptation is a testament to the enduring appeal of the narrative and the efforts to bring it to life in cinema. In a notable display of dedication, Miriam Hopkins graces the screen for nearly the entire duration of the film, delivering a performance that earned her an Oscar nomination. This recognition marked the only time she was nominated for the prestigious award. Years later, the film underwent a significant restoration process by the UCL Film and Television Archive. The effort, led by Robert Gitt, brought the film closer to its original visual glory. The audience at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Theater witnessed the unveiling of this restored version, which included a majority of footage in three color and some in two color, reflecting varying preservation states. In a significant financial undertaking, CV, Whitney invested 950000 in the production of a film that marked a milestone in cinema. Casting challenges arose when Miriam Hopkins, initially considered for the lead role, could not reach a salary agreement and was subsequently replaced. Myrna Loy and Claudette Colbert were then eyed for the central character, with Colbert initially declining due to script dissatisfaction before ultimately accepting the role. Notably, despite its historical setting and the use of extensive and elaborate costuming, the film stands out for not having a designated costume designer credited for these visual elements. Recognized for its significance in film history, this production earned a spot in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress in 2019. It stands as a testament to the early adoption of color technology in cinema following the success of a short film the previous year. This milestone was made possible by the formation of Pioneer Pictures by John Hay Whitney and C.V. Whitney, marking the beginning of color films with this feature as their inaugural project. In the early days of color cinematography, the film stands out for its technical achievement, but also carries a somber note. Lowell Sherman, the original director, died from pneumonia during production, and the task of completing the film fell to Robin Mamoulian. This event cast a shadow over the production, as Sherman was a respected figure in the industry, and his untimely death at the age of 46 was a loss to Hollywood. Despite this tragedy, the film went on to make history with its pioneering use of Technicolor, becoming the first feature film to use the three-strip Technicolor process throughout.